You know, I sure do like Sonic the Hedgehog video games. If only there were some way I could get my hands on a bunch. Sigh. Too bad I'm eight years old and don't have access to my parents' credit card. Whatever will I do now? Wait a second! Well, this is just the next best thing! Sonic fan games are a plenty. You don't need me to reveal that info to you. And while some fans have made some amazing works of art that rival even Sega's official creations, such as Project Hero, Sonic Time Twisted, etc., etc., there's also then the less impressive fan games, mostly coming in the form of crap, quickly thrown together flash games chucked onto new grounds by young aspiring game developers. I played a ton of these growing up. There was probably a period where I played them more than the official games. But that's the thing. Did you know that there was a point where Sega was consistently releasing official Sonic Flash games? Yeah, I'm not making that up. Originally, this video started as a quick little dive into the Sonic and the Black Knight Neopets crossover, but once I started digging, I realized just how many Flash games Sega put out, some I even unknowingly played when I was a kid. So that's what we're gonna do today. Let's take a look through each and every officially licensed Sonic Flash game. <laughs> I think it's only fitting to start off with the very first officially licensed Sonic Flash game, released all the way back in 1997, to promote Sonic 3D Blast coming to the Sega Saturn. Sonic 3D Bonus Game. As you can imagine, it's just a shitty Flash version of the special stage from the Mega Drive version of 3D Blast. It's very primitive, but cool to see as a piece of Sonic's history, and even features some unused music such as an unused theme from Sonic Spinball, and a bonus and boss theme from 3D Blast that was never used. Neat! I'm glad something like this has been documented online. It's really cool to see just how far back Sega was embracing the internet. Anyone remember Neopets? Well, I don't. I was more of a Ben Weevils guy myself. It was one of those virtual pet sites where you could earn Neo points and Neo cash by playing Neo mini games and Neo Green Hill Zone. Well, I was surprised to find out that in 2009, Sega actually released an official Sonic and the Black Knight game to the site to promote the upcoming game. I like Sonic and the Black Knight. It's really basic and short, but I still think it's fun. One thing that was always odd to me though was how in the first couple levels you collected apples as you went along. Which I don't really remember going towards anything and once you beat that level they don't really appear anymore. How are we to go on without knowing what these goddamn apples are for? Well thankfully the Flash game decided to expand upon this feature. As the riveting gameplay involves you... Turning Sonic 90 degrees to slash an apple that's coming towards him. Like I said, these are Flash games, you're not getting anything too complex here. This is mostly just for the sake of having all these documented in a single video. Who the fuck drew this Sonic? He's so chubby, I love it. And for some reason the Knights of the Round Table are using crossbows to shoot at him? This game is amazing, 10 out of 10, we're starting off strong. It uses the Star Wars font of all things, of course it's perfect. What's next? Jumping ahead in time a bit here, but we all know about the three Sonic Boom games, right? Rise of Lyric, Shattered Crystal, Fire and Ice. But did you know there was a secret fourth Sonic Boom game? Well... Here it is. Sonic Boom Lincoln Smash. This game is fucking shit. They wanted to make some simple puzzle game, but it's so basic. All you gotta do is match the character items, Amy's hammer, Styx's boomerang, etc. There's nothing to talk about other than the fact that this was available to play on the boomerang website as a way to promote the show. Just a useless factoid about an uninteresting game. Next. Okay, so this is the one I actually remember playing a bunch as a kid, but I never knew it was official. This is a 2D side-scroller based off the 2005 Shadow the Hedgehog game, where the characters of the in-game models converted to 2D sprites like 3D Blast or Donkey Kong Country. It's really cool to look at. Sadly, in terms of gameplay, it's not all that great. <laughs> it's, it's really hard to control Shadow and the gunplay isn't very good. When you drop from a platform, Shadow drops like a fucking brick. Sometimes I can't even tell I'm falling, he's going so fast it looks like I'm just being teleported to different areas. So yeah, this game isn't very good, but I feel like it's worth checking out just for the visuals alone. It's cool we get to see a closer look at the backdrop for Ostopolis. And I love when Shadow falls down a pit, he stops in place and dies as if he were getting hit, it's great. But after Shadow the Hedgehog, we got Sonic 06. And you bet your ass we got an epic Flash game to promote that jam. Oh boy, Sonic Chaos Crush! Just look at that title screen, it looks so badass. Sonic running through Kingdom Valley, it's like an in-game recreation of the box art. Dude, Sonic 06 may have been a mess, but maybe, just maybe, this will be a hidden jam. Well, it's unique to say the least. 
And by unique, I mean it's fucking brick eyes. The only thing even remotely Sonic-y about it is that when you either brick the Sonic Shadow or Silver pieces, you gotta use their individual powers that all do the same thing by just shooting the ball forwards. Although you do gotta hear a neat little voice line when you do it. That's all I really have to say, it's a puzzle game. I'm realizing now that I'm flip-flopping a lot in terms of when the game came out, but who cares bro, cause we now got Sonic Heroes puzzle. Does the best Sonic game of all time have the best Flash game of all time? Oh, it's another puzzle game. I should have got that from the title, honestly. I remember playing this one too as a kid, although it's weird to think that this was official. It's just the same as Sonic Boom Link and Smash, although obviously this one came first. I have to imagine there's just shitty Flash puzzle game templates they use whenever you just replace the pieces because it's just the exact same. Just match the characters with the items, moving on. Next we have the 2001 release SA2 Jigsaw, made to promote Sonic Adventure 2. It's a Jigsaw. You could play it in the official Sonic Team website and, uh... Sonic Chronicles sucks, am I right? I remember being so excited to get it for my birthday, and I only ended up playing it for like 5 minutes because I couldn't tell what was going on. I later beat it as a kid and enjoyed it quite a bit, but after going back to it recently... <laughs> yeah, it's shit. But did you know Bioware actually released a playable hub from the game online in 2008? Sadly, this game isn't completely archived. There's a missing file that makes all the text impossible to read, but still, it's really cool being able to see the maps and models from the game at a higher quality. Makes me want to see them try their hand at a new Sonic RPG in a similar hand-painted style. Chronicles had a lot of potential. It was mainly just the gameplay that bogs everything down. This is really dope. Next. To promote the iToy Sega Superstars game, we got Sega Superstars Adventure, which was a flash recreation of the Sonic minigame from the PS2 entry. It's alright, kinda has the same problem of the older Sonic 2 special stages, or since it's all sprites it makes it harder to see and judge where things are coming from. But it's still neat and I love this Sonic render at the end, it's got so much charm. Really wish they'd go back to texturing Sonic's smirk on his model in the newer games. Either way, there's not much to say here, it's just a cool little special stage. Unfortunately, Sonic Rush never received a Flash game, but its sequel, Sonic Rush Adventure, actually did. In this, you get to play a recreation of the boat side game from there, using your mouse as a DS stylus to control Sonic on a jet ski. It even has a placeholder DS screen to try and emulate that look, it's really cool. This game is impressive as fuck. If you were to tell me I was watching actual footage of the DS version, I would have believed you. It's super interesting to see just how much these Flash games have evolved. I mean, compare this to Sonic 3D bonus game. Hopefully Sega ended up doing more stuff like this. I mean, the last thing we need is another puzzle game. Jesus Christ, it seems like every Sonic game got a fucking Flash game. Even the mostly forgotten Sonic Rivals series, which I feel are actually underrated. I should make a video on them someday, I really enjoy them, especially the second one. This is a 2D racing game. And much like the PSP version, you play as Sonic and have to race Shadow to the end of the stage. It even has a two-player mode where you can race against a friend. Like the Shadow Flash game, I like this one a lot, purely for being able to get an up-close look at the models at a higher quality. Which, now that I look at it, appears to be the Sonic Heroes model of all things. If you look at the running animation, it's really apparent. I wonder if the actual game is also using a low-poly version of that, that's really cool. Reminds me of how the models for Teals and Knuckles and Smash Bros was just the Heroes models with different textures. Who knows, maybe that was just a rumor, that's just what I remember at least. Wait a second, I just noticed that the Shadow model from this game is the same one from the Shadow Flash game, which is the same model from the 2005 console Shadow game. You can tell because in Heroes, Shadow just goes into a ball, but in Shadow the Hedgehog, he squashes and stretches a lot more, just like in the Rivals Flash game. It's genuinely really neat to see where all these reused assets are coming from. Not even Sonic TV shows from the time were safe, as we even got a Sonic X game called... Sonic XS, and the... Uh... Ugh, this is official? I played this as a kid and even I thought this looked like shit. After doing more research, I find out that this art style is actually based off the 24th episode of the anime, where this is exactly how Sonic is drawn in a shitty, like, crayon style. Such an odd choice for the game, but I guess a less detailed Sonic is an easier game to animate. It's just a shitty, blocky platformer. Sonic can throw out his rings as a projectile, which is cool, and something I'm surprised they've never tried before in a game. But did you know there was actually a second Sonic XS game called... Shadow XS? Yep, we get the same Sonic sprite painted black running around this weird blood-colored sky world. And it's obvious whoever made this has no idea what the fuck a Sonic even is, just look at this plot. After kidnapping Amy Rose, Sonic XS is coming to get you. You must escape through the fire level into the safety of your evil hideout. That sure sounds like Shadow alright. You know what was weird to me? How with the original Sonic movie design, the shoes he wore were made by Nike, but in the final film they were Puma brand. It's strange they ended up ditching Nike because Sega and them have actually worked together in the past, on the 2012 Flash game Sonic X Vapor. 
Apparently on a Nike video for their new campaign, if you paused it on a video then clicked on it, you'd be taken to the classic Sega screen, followed by a similar vapor chant. Then you get this awful Sonic 4 title screen music, and the game becomes an endless runner using Splash Hill's theme song even though you're in Green Hill. Sonic is sporting a new pair of Nike football boots here, and some new sprites have been added to him like when he starts to run off at the beginning, which looks great. This is really impressive and looks like a ton of fun actually. Would've loved to try this one out. Kinda, kinda reminds me of Sonic Runners 3 years before Sonic Runners even came out. Sonic Mii's craze was released to promote the release of Sonic and the Secret Rings, where Sonic has lost his shoes in the sand oasis and you have found them. Oh boy, what kind of fanfiction hole did this crawl out of? The game is fine, it's literally on the levels of the stuff I was asked to make in my ICT class in high school. You just avoid obstacles and use the mouse to move, Th that's all, moving on. I don't want to listen to the same 4 second loop anymore. <laughs> Sonic Mega Collection is great. Sega really should release more Sonic game bundles on modern hardware. It's a great way to revisit these older titles. But if you don't have a console, you could always try out Sonic Mega Collection Plus. Mini. In this you get the ability to play Green Hill Zone Act 1 from Sonic 1. Using the Sonic 2 sprites? Great. I mean, I don't know why you'd even want to. Being a shitty Flash game, there's no momentum to speak of. Sonic is so annoying to control here. If you're already on a computer, then you might as well just go and emulate the original. You know, if that weren't illegal, I mean. Fuck, I've incriminated myself. Move on, move on. Sonic the Broad Jump. Sonic the Broad Jump. This is, a. Uh... Okay, I gotta be honest, I have no fucking clue what's going on here. So it looks like you maybe mash the mouse down to charge up a jump and then... And then, and then you make a jump. A broad jump? Okay, alright, this is the worst one by far. Remember those Tiger Electronic LCD games that used to be really popular for some reason? Yeah, Sonic Speedway is like an online version of that released in 2003 to promote the... McDonald's Sonic LCD games? So you're making a game to promote Sonic games that are used to promote other Sonic games. Going a bit overboard here, Sega, come on. Did you know Sega recently re-released the Sonic 3 Tiger Electronic? It doesn't correlate at all, I just think that's 10 times more interesting than this shit. I gotta get all of this someday for a video. They made like a Sonic Underground one? Okay, I'm moving on. Alright, we're really starting to get to the bottom of the barrel here. Sonic X 4 Kids Minigame Collection is a small collection of really basic themed Sonic games like clicking on rings and chaos emeralds, Sonic Bowling, another shitty puzzle game. Sonic Snake with this ugly ass looking Sonic and matching the tiles. What do you want me to say? It speaks for itself. And finally, the last game we have to look at today is Sonic Channel Jigsaw Puzzle Collection. They're fucking puzzles, I don't care. And that's them all. To my knowledge, oh fuck, you don't think there's more, do you? Well, if there are, let me know in the comments. I'm sure I'll definitely be making a part two to this video. But I'm pretty confident in saying that we're not getting any more of these since Flash died. So this isn't gonna need updating anytime soon. Big thanks to Sonic Station, who made my life a lot easier since they archived all the stuff on their channel. But yeah, all these games are shit, go home. <laughs>